Hi everyone, so I just wanted to go over how you'll finish making your food chains and food webs and looking at how energy is moving through an ecosystem. If you weren't in class before, then you'll need to make sure that you make a data table, something like what's on the left hand side. So you need to have your animal and then an identification for what they are. So if they're a producer or if they're an omnivore, an herbivore, or carnivore. So you're going to want to make a table um, that has your organisms. If you weren't in class, then make sure that you go grab a list of organisms and work with your partner to make that table. That table can go across from your energy producers and consumers notes. What we're going to do with our organisms is we're going to go ahead and make a food chain. So here's my example food chain for my list of organisms. I have the grass, the grasshopper, um, which is then eaten by the robin, which is then eaten by the owl, which is then eaten by the bear. On the bottom, you see another food chain, starting with the algae, which is the producer, and then the flagfish, the bass, the bird, and then the alligator. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to grab a separate piece of paper, pause the video, and go ahead and make your own food chain. You and your partner can each make your own and then share so that you have two total uh, for each person. Now that you have your food chain, I want you to remember that energy flows in one direction whenever we're looking at our food chains. So energy flows from the producer to the consumer and then from the primary consumer to the secondary consumer and onward. So notice the arrows in my food chain are going from the top to the bottom and flowing from the grass to the grasshopper from the grasshopper to the robin. And if you look at the food chain on the bottom, they're flowing from the algae to the flagfish, from the flagship to the fish to the largemouth bass. So please remember that they only go in one direction and double check your arrows now. Our next step for our food chains is to label what they are. So we're gonna start with our producer. So grass is a producer. Then we have our primary consumer, which is the grasshopper, our secondary consumer, which is the robin, the tertiary consumer, which is the owl, and the quaternary consumer, which is the bear. So go ahead and pause the video, take a minute and label both of your food chains. So you should have two on your piece of paper. Go ahead and label both of your food chains uh, like you see pictured. After you're done with that, we're going to go ahead and make some pyramids. So there are pyramids of energy, there are pyramids of numbers, and there's pyramids of biomass. With the pyramids of energy, um, you're going to use your food chain, and then you can show this as an example. I'll explain to you how this works. So with energy, we start out with our producers having the most energy, and so we're going to pretend that there would be a thousand kilocalories of energy within our producers. Now the original energy comes from the sun, so it flows into the producers and then they go through photosynthesis and they make their energy. So we'll pretend that the grass, which are our producers, have a thousand kilocalories of energy. When we go up a trophic level to the grasshopper, we're going to have 100 kilocalories. Okay, so only 10% of the energy goes forward to the next trophic level. So whenever we go to our trophic level with the robin, we would have 10 kilocalories of energy. With our owl, we would have one kilocalorie of energy. And with our bear, we'd have 0.1 kilocalorie of energy, okay, relative to what we started with at the beginning. This is because a lot of the energy is going to be lost in the form of heat. It's going to be lost in the form of movement. It's going to be lost in the form of need to reproduce. And so there's a lot of ways that the energy is going to be lost so that the energy is going to basically decline as you go up trophic levels. The reason why this matters is because it's going to then impact the numbers and how many organisms can be present in an ecosystem as you move up different trophic levels. Go ahead and hit pause and make your own pyramid of energy. After you've completed your pyramid of energy, we're going to go ahead and make our pyramid of biomass. Our pyramid of biomass, so you're going to use again one of your food chains as an example, and we're just going to play with numbers. So biomass is referring to how many kilograms of material, material there would be at each trophic level. I'm going to just use simple numbers, so I'm going to pretend that in my 
first trophic level with my producers that I have 10,000 kilograms of biomass, which is not very much. And then we'll pretend that we're going to lose. I'm going to go again with the 10%, but it's going to be some number that's less than what you start with typically um, from the producers then on to the consumers. So then maybe the grasshoppers have 1,000 kilograms. Maybe the robins have 100 kilograms. Maybe the owls have 10 kilograms. And the bear maybe has one kilogram. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause, go ahead and make and label your pyramid of biomass, and then write a short sentence explaining what is happening. You and your partner can have the same pyramid for this, but I'd like you to each have a copy. So both of you make it and then write a sentence explaining what's happening. Finally, we're going to go ahead and make a pyramid of numbers. Pyramid of numbers is referring to how many of an organism is present in an ecosystem. Typically, we see a pyramid like this, like we've seen before, where we have the most or the highest number of producers and then fewer each of the consumers as we move up trophic levels. So again, if I had 10,000 blades of grass, then I'd have 1,000 grasshoppers. I'd have 100 robins. I'd have 10 owls and I'd have one bear. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video. You and your partner make your pyramid of numbers, label it um, using your food chain and write a sentence explaining what's happening. Now I do want to cause your, call your attention to one difference. And so if you had something like a tree, then sometimes you can have fewer producers at the bottom and then a lot more of your primary consumers and then fewer of your carnivores and it gets smaller as you go up. So go ahead and pause your video and make a pyramid of numbers and write a sentence explaining what is happening. Our last step is to make a food web. A food web is more complex than a food chain. Energy still flows in one direction, but we're going to, instead of having only one set of consumers and um, one set of consumers in one pathway, there will be multiple pathways. Food webs, so this is our food webs, they're going to be better at showing how an ecosystem really interacts and how you could have some negative impacts. For example, if you lost the grass, so if the producer was impacted, then the entire food web would be impacted by that change. So food webs show us how uh, there can be disturbances um, within an ecosystem and how little changes down the food chain can make big changes as you go up the food chain. So this is an example of my food web. You want to try to use as many organisms as possible and then draw arrows where they go. As you notice, the grass has multiple arrows going to a lot of different herbivores or omnivores that are able to eat the grass. And then that goes on many different arrows from the cricket to a few different places. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you shouldn't have, you know, a mouse eating a bear, but something that makes logical sense. Whenever you are done writing your food web, I want you to try to label um, your food web with the um, producers and then primary, secondary, tertiary, or quad quaternary consumers. Do your best because some of the different basically food chains within this food web um, might have the organisms as different levels and different trophic levels. So just take a look, do your best and label that. So go ahead and pause your video, make your food web and label the trophic levels there. All right, hopefully at this point you're done. Uh, the food web, another example of a food web would be something like this. Again, the food web is important because you wanna note that if for example, something happened to uh, the algae or the krill. Let's say something happened to the krill. If something happens to the krill, then the impact is very big because the algae supplies the krill and the krill supplies everything else in the food, in the food web and the food chains. So go ahead, take a look, make sure that you've completed everything and go ahead and turn it into the bin. Thanks.